In this video, we'll be looking at how to filter out the different shapes that come out of this hexagon cells uh, component for using Lunchbox. So, this is a, a great component because it allows you to quickly get a array of hexagons across a surface, but the difficulty that most people encounter is being able to control which hexagons um, go where because of the different shape that is, ends up being produced uh, based on edge condition and corner condition. So what's coming out is uh, a big flat list of 61 curves. So let's just clean this up a little bit. Let's move it down here so that we can work with it. And the way that you have to approach this is pretty simple, I think. Um, the logic is how do you count the number of either points or sides of each one of these curves to make a distinction between each of them. So what we'll do is let's try the um, let's try the edge method. So we're going to explode these curves. So if you look at them, they're each polyline curves, which if we put them in here, you can see that immediately that each list has a different number of segments ranging from four, five, and six, which is exactly what we want. So now we need to test which ones have six segments, which ones have five segments, and which ones have four. And we can do that by using an equals, an equality test. So it asks to compare two numbers, and it tells uh, on the output side whether that was true or false. So I'm going to put in another component called list length, which measures the number of items in the list. So if I look at the output here, my panel component, you can see now it's telling me not the actual segments, but the number of segments. So four, five, five, six, and so forth, which is then going to be our first number. And our second number is going to be, uh, let's make a slider actually. So four, less than five, less than six. And we're going to be testing for number four. So if I put this in here, now I'll get a, ideally, I've got to use a panel component, a true false list. As you can see, there's true, false, 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 true, um, and so forth, that I can use now to filter these, this curve list here. So, Next thing to notice is that this is a, sorry, from the output of the hexagon cells, a flat list. And what's coming out of here is not. It's a, it's a branch structure, and each one of these items are in their own list. So what we're going to do is actually we're going to flatten that. And now these two lists are in the similar structure and they can line up. I'm going to use a, what's called a dispatch. And the dispatch will take any list, so my hexagon cells here, and it will sort them based on a true or false uh, pattern. So if I put my pattern into my dispatch list here, I now have some items in list A and the rest of the items in list B. So now list A holds only the items that have four sides. So if I look here, 
that's what's coming out. I'm going to delete these panels. I'm going to make a curve component. Let me turn these off. It may be difficult to see, but now those corners with the four sides are the only ones that are highlighted. Perfect. So I'm going to rename these four sided. And what I'm going to do is copy these components here down. Do that twice. All I have to do is change the slider to five and six. So now the second row is testing for five sided curves and the third row is testing for six sided curves. So I can rename these five sided six sided and I can select it Let's see okay you can see them here the five the six sided the five sided ones are a little bit difficult to see because they're overlapping with the six sided so I'm going to actually just bake these using the insert button insert select last actually I need to insert select last you can see it in there so my corners insert five-sided not sure where they go, I think that goes there yep almost there and then my six-sided there we go I'm going to have all my curves so now we've successfully sorted these and now we can take some of these components here we'll take the cull duplicates and my adaptive component component I'm going to copy this button oops Wrong button, it's this one. Put this in here. All right. And I'm going to use a control points component here. And I can feed that polyline curve into there. And you can see, again, we have a similar issue of the previous video where I have a four-sided polygon but it has five points and that's because of the duplicate point at the end and the start of that curve so if I feed it in there now I can call those duplicates and I have four points and then I have my simplify which allows me to easily pass the correct component uh, points list into my adaptive component component. Uh, I will copy these, pull them down, copy these, pull it down, feed this into here, five-sided into there. And I would just have to rename these, so I would say you know, four points say quad five points say penta 
and six points. Name this one Hexa. Okay. Then I would just hit this button, which would then, uh, as you can see here, four, five, six points, create my CSV files for transferring it into Revit. And we're not going to do that uh, step because we have to make the adaptive component for it. And we're not going to go over that in this video. But what this uh, shows us is just a easy method for sorting different types of curves based on their at the count of their edge segments. So if you ever end up using the hexagon cells component in this workflow or something similar, now you should be able to uh, accomplish that. So uh, in the next video, we should be uh, looking at what to do with some of these edge curves that you end up getting out of this particular component because hexagons are a little bit tricky to work with uh, in creating surfaces and managing them because they have uh, so much flexibility um, and your surfaces end up not being flat. So we'll take a look at that soon.